XRP2. It's an LLC company that has very suspicious origins. In fact, the name itself implies that there were some really dodgy things going on. And what about the true Ripple vs SEC case that was concluded many years before this phony one even began? Today we will be discussing the true SEC case, which involved FinCEN, XRP2 and Ripple, and how they secretly tried to conceal the truth for you and how they lied to the world. Welcome to CryptoCurrent. I'm your host, Crypto Rick. So today we're going to be talking about basically how my gut feeling is that Ripple has been doing some dodgies behind our back and have not been telling us the full story. If you are prone to uh, getting angry with perceived FUD, or if you uh, have a short fuse for conspiracies, or if you do not like people speculating, then this video is not for you. Best you exit now and go to a safe space, uh, safe space designation, such as the digital asset investors and other washed up XRP YouTubers that cover the mainstream SEC news as if it's gospel truth. Now that we have the enlightened ones remaining and the snowflakes out, I'm gonna show you how deep this rabbit hole goes. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So what is XRP2? XRP2 is actually a subsidiary of Ripple Labs. It was initially called XRP Fund 2, um, and it was incorporated in 2013. It was later changed to XRP2 in 2014. And Ripple, someone actually asked David Schwartz, our favorite uh, non-invasive, non-NSA engineer, non-club member, for a response, and as usual, we get the go around. He states, uh, and he, he, he states, XRP2 is a separate legal entity controlled by Ripple, Ripple Labs and is needed to conduct separate specific activities. Hmm? Separate specific activities? What does that mean exactly? Why is he always so evasive? He can't tell you that they were selling XRP behind your back privately to central bankers, to other private institutions. Now think about the name, Ripple2. That sounds, I mean, why would they pick Ripple2? Why not just Ripple1? Why not just Ripple uh, XRP funds? Why XRP2? This is my gut feeling, and I'll explain this later on. I think XRP2 was an accurate designation. It was supposed to be a branch off uh, company, subsidiary, involved in the private sale of a private XRP token. Not the, public, not the public XRP one that we have, but a XRP2. And I've been hypothesizing this for many months now. Anyone who's been following me knows I make frequent reference to this Every time I try and speak out, we always have what I call an arbitrage parrot who says, but David Schwartz, an arbitrage. And I said how easy it is for them to have their own private supply of XRP unrelated to our 100 billion tokens that's coded with one line differently that prevents cross access with use on our public ledger that would get rid of arbitrage. How easy is that to be created if I could think of it? I'm sure a top NSA engineer could. And, you know, people assume that we are dealing with an ethical business, which Ripple is not. Furthermore, regarding this case, why hasn't John Deaton mentioned this case? Why hasn't the Ripple lawyers mentioned this case to us? This should have been some sort of Precedent, important information, but let me show you further. 
again, someone said, uh, is it a coin or a token? He says, no, it's a legal entity, an LLC. But you create a legal entity to do what? To do conduct business. What is the nature of that business? We know in the documents it, show, it said to sell the XRP in exchange for money. They were acting as a kind of money service. So we know what the nature of that business is. And they even said that they were selling XRP. But they were not selling it through mainstream exchanges. They were selling it directly over the counter. Now, it says here, according to the document, XRP2 is involved in the sale of cryptocurrencies. Thus, the company was selling XRP in exchange for fiat money. That's why it's called the XRP2 fund. It was basically collecting money to distribute this private XRP. But let's continue. So what is FinCEN? FinCEN is, stands for the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. It's a bureau of the United States Department of Treasury that analyzes things to do with fighting anti-money laundering, terrorist activities, and other financial crimes. Uh, Ripple basically failed to uh, register with FinCEN as a money service business and basically got into trouble for doing that. The outcome which many few people know about so we can is that Ripple actually was fined a penalty of 450,000 to the attorney and 700,000 uh, to FinCEN but hang on, why would you pay two separate fines? Now, again, I'm speculating here, but these sound like bribes to me, okay? Um, I wasn't born yesterday. Generally, when you're fined, you're fined one thing, and it's normally not $700,000. It's normally less. I'm no lawyer, but the fact that the attorney got the money and notice, notice the wording here. They agreed to forfeit. That doesn't sound like a penalty to me. You don't agree to forfeit. I don't. If I get fined, I don't agree to forfeit $450,000 and give that to the attorney. And, you know, something is going on, okay? Anyway, it basically says here, Ripple Labs Incorporated and XRP2 LLC, formerly known as XRP Fund LLC, agreed to pay that civil penalty. Um, basically, they mention here a Ripple wallet, which they called Ripple Trade. So notice all these subsidiaries that Ripple has created. Ripple Wallet, Ripple Trade. You know, they call it Ripple Trade MSB, uh, XRP Fund. These are wallets, basically, to conduct the sale of businesses, and they try to be sneaky and register it under a separate runaway name. Now, this is my gut hypothesis. Jed McCaleb was basically using that wallet, and I'm going to make a link here. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but it could be the taco stand. Basically, his job was to break away, you know, either these new LLCs or, or other, and sell this private XRP on the back end, a supply that we don't know about. And they were prosecuted, but, you know, they understood the nature of this. And so they basically got a bribe. They basically then got a uh, uh, regulatory approval they were deemed a virtual currency and it was settled and then they added on this fake current sec trial to prolong the case as a phony one when the, it has already been done the deal has already been done but this is scandalous guys why hasn't john deaton that psyop guy why hasn't Chad Garlic Mouse, that sneaky smiling devil. Why didn't any of these Ripple lawyers mention this precedent? Because this is an important precedent. 
if FinCEN and you know the SEC and the United States Attorney de declared them to be virtual currency, then why has that not been brought up? And the only possible reason is it's all a big con job, guys. Listen to me, all right? This is devilish activity happening. What we're seeing here is a bunch of devils, a bunch of devils. And there's a saying, I think it was uh, Agatha Christie. She said, uh, I think uh, one coincidence is just a coincidence. Two coincidences is a clue, but three coincidences is the case solved. Something along those lines, but pretty much when you add up all the coincidences, look at the public XRP price. ISO 22 came around, went live, no price change. ODL went live, no price change. Uh, CBDC is going live, no change. And we're like, what the hell? If you're using our public XRP, we should have seen at least a pump. ODL in itself should have pumped it to at least 10 to $100. Then add ISO, that should have pumped it to 1,000. And then CBDC is even more. But it didn't even go up one single dollar. Why? Because they're not using our public XRP. They're using, this is my gut feeling, I can't prove it. They're using XRP too. Basically from the LLC created by their XRP2 fund. And I've been saying this all along. Now, you have to ask yourself, okay, they will say, oh, uh, they've been uh, using it on the DevNet. You know, the private ledger is a testnet, it's a DevNet. They're just testing it. But that's not what the ISO documents have stated. They have stated that they're going live. They never said, oh, we're going to go testing on November 20. They never said, oh, we're going to be testing ODL. They said, we're going live on these dates. Now, answer this question. Do you go live on a DevNet? Do you go live on a testnet? No. You go live on a mainnet, but yet no price action. Look. Look. I'm no genius, okay? But I wasn't born yesterday, right? I was not born yesterday. And I saw through the bullshit. I saw through the crap, all right? And I've been saying this now for a while. Very few other channels have been saying this. I could probably name them on my hands. Crypto Hulk is one of them, of course. And I think there's another one working on Money Channel or something like that. They covered that one. Uh, obviously, Black Swan Capitalist touched upon it. The rest are basically, oh, and Mel Carmine, the QFS, we touched on how it was a phony case. Other than that, everyone else fell for it. So I want to be written down in history, in the history books, that we were not fooled, that we tried to help hold them accountable that we actually did not get swept up with this lie because I don't want to be involved. I don't want them saying, haha, they fooled us. No, 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 no. Don't bring me into it. I was telling you guys as, as just like some other people that this was a, a, a farce. Okay. The question is, what are we going to do about it now? Now I'm thinking about doing a formal inquiry, writing up a document and sending it to, to Ripple on behalf of XRP members. To basically ask for more clarification because this is scandalous and they we need to put pressure on ripple to fess up with these details uh everything ranging from the private ledger to this fincen case to xrp2 what is going on in there hmm. this was a ripple cruise party not too long ago Drinks, food, massive yacht, of course, Brad Garlinghouse and co drinking it up. They're laughing at you, fools. 
<laughs> Ew, but we're covering the SEC case. Amicus brief. Really, guys? Really? Oh, but the summary judgment's coming, and then the judge, and then the judge will submit something soon. But then it got redacted, and then Hinman, and then Himanitis. Oh my god, Hinman! Right. Grow up and smell the hummus. Do these look like people that are nervous? Because it's all a show. And all these idiotic YouTubers covering the case, cheering for John Deaton. Again, I, I want to say this not out of arrogance. But was I not the first to call out John Deaton? Was I not the first to call out Brad Garlinghouse? Of course, I wasn't the first to come out with this XRP2 stuff. But I say this only for the viewers because a lot of them doubted me. And a lot of them, frankly, owe me an apology because of the way they treated me after I released videos. But as I said, I always have the last laugh in the end. So going back to my theory, you got the private ledger and you got the public ledger, right? You've got all these pro public side chains. You've got here, you've got the XRP, our XRP, 100 bill, 100 billy, right? This is my theory. Jed McKayla, the snake, was going around plus minus taco stand, plus minus XRP2, LLC, the wallets, etc. Going around, practically selling to these private ledgers, mainly the central bankers, XRP2, okay? That has a line of coding that prevents use from the public XRP. AK, it's not transferable, but it is interoperable with our XRP. In other words, it interacts bi-directionally, but it's not, like it interacts with our XRP, but it's not, it's got a line of coding. That means you can't arbitrage. So anyone, a lot of these channels, they try and, they try and make themselves look intellectual. They'll start off the video like this. Oh, there's YouTubers out there who are spreading misinformation about the private ledger. Haha, <laughs> look, they're so stupid. They mentioned 327,000, but David Schwartz has already answered this because of arbitrage. I know when I hear that, I know they haven't done their research because they're just parroting David Schwartz. They, in their limited minds, they don't know that there are actually ways around the arbitrage problem, which I've already discussed to death. If you're new to the channel, we've already discussed it. We've already answered that piss weak argument about arbitrage. There's so many ways. There's actually four ways you can get around it. One, create a coin with a line of coding that's similar to XRP, but not exact, basically non-transferable onto the public ledger. That stops arbitrage. Number two, have its own supply aside from our 100 billion, basically uh, uh, with an agreed price by consensus that's completely walled off. Only federators can let it through. That's number two. Number three, what if it's another, what if it doesn't use XRP? What if it uses no XRP token? What if it uses Ripple technology directly? What if it's another XRP old token? That's not our XRP. There's innumerable ways you can skin the cat, but the end result is the same. You can have shady things going on without the public determining it. And we need a public inquiry the proposal needs to be second in priority. Right now, we need a private ledger inquiry. That includes XRP2, details of the FinCEN, detail of this settlement, detail of any other private tokens available that were sold. We need to know the exact nature, and it's we've had enough. We've had enough of not seeing the price of XRP change, and people blame it because of lack of regulation, because of lack of adoption. But the reality is they're using it now. ODL is live right now, and this is no test net. They're using it now, yet, yet no change. Why? Because of this problem right here. Things happening on the back edge, the backside. So I'm going to be working 
towards something and if not at least this video will educate you on the big con job that ripple has pulled on all of us but i want to finish off by saying ripple uh, xrp the public one will still have value because it's still needed for this whole big circle here this whole public xrp on network but it won't have the full value of what was anticipated and as kendra hill even said some of that value from the private ledger is lost because of these private federated chains and people will disagree with me to death on that but if kendra hill and insider xrp insider basically confirmed that the private ledger detracted value away from the public ledger and maybe now that all these details about xrp2 is coming maybe it's time you actually started changing your thinking to one instead of accusing to now hmm something's odd i don't care if you're not completely convinced all i want you to do is now is to start asking the question of what if and with that i'll leave you stay safe hold the coins we're all going to make it in the end together let us surf and ride through the Kali Yuga. i'm crypto rick and as always have a good day